today we will discuss a most important biasing circuit of the transistor that is voltage divider bias method the circuit of voltage divider bias method is like this in this biasing circuit two resistances r1 and r2 are connected across the supply voltage vcc this is positive terminal of the supply vcc and here is negative terminal of the supply vcc and these two resistances are thus across it the name voltage divider come from the voltage divider formed by r1 and r2 the voltage drop across r2 forward biases the base emitter junction this causes the base current and hence collector current flow in the zero signal conditions this is the most widely used method as it is a very high degrees of bias stability even when beta and leakage currents are high let's we analyze the circuit first apply the voltage divider rule to the input circuit this one to find the voltage v2 across r2 consider current through r1 is i1 and that of through r2 is i1 minus ib but we know that ib is very small therefore we can take i1 minus ib which is equal to i1 it means current through r2 is also i1 hence applying kirchhoff's law to this input section we have vcc equal to i1 r1 plus i1 r2 taking i1 common vcc equal to i1 into r1 plus r2 and therefore we have i1 equal to vcc upon r1 plus r2 say equation 1 this is the current through r2 so voltage across r2 is v2 equal to i1 into r2 substituting the value of i1 from this equation we have v2 equal to vcc r2 upon r1 plus r2 say equation 2 now applying kirchhoff's law to this base emitter loop we have v2 equal to vbe plus ie re since ie equal to ib plus ic ib is very very less than ic and therefore we take ie equal to ic therefore taking here ie equal to ic we can write v2 equal to vbe plus ic re and therefore ic equal to v2 minus vbe upon re say equation 3 now applying kirchhoff's law to the output circuit that is this one we get vcc equal to icrc plus vce plus ie re but ie and rc are approximately equal therefore we take here ie equal to ic and therefore vcc equal to icrc plus vc plus ic re by taking ic common we can write vc is equal to ic into rc plus re plus vc make vc is subject of the formula therefore vc equal to vcc minus ic into rc plus re say equation 4 now make ic subject of the formula therefore we have ic equal to vcc minus vce upon rc plus re say equation 5 now in these equations 3 4 and 5 beta doesn't appear it means there is no any effect of beta on ic and vce thus operating point does not depends upon beta of transistor and remains same if we either replace the transistor by another transistor of same type let us see the effect of temperature change if the temperature is increased it will increase the ic but ic which is equal to ie therefore 
it will cause the voltage drop across emitter resistance R E to increase. At voltage drop across R2 is independent of I C, therefore V B E decreases. This will decrease I B, which in turn will reduce I C to its original value. Now Q point. For specification of Q point, we need I B, I C, and V C. In which I C we have derived as in equation three, and it is I C equal to V two minus V B E upon R E, and V C E derived by this equation four. That is V C E equal to V C C minus I C into R C plus R E. Now we need base current I B. To specify the operating point at the center of load line, the value of V C E should be 0.5 V C C. Since I B equal to I C upon beta, and we have take the value of R1 and R2 such that one tenth of I1 current available for base. Let R equal to R1 plus R2, and therefore. R equal to V C C upon I one, that is equal to V C C upon ten I B, and R two equal to V two upon I one, and therefore R one equal to R minus R two. So by keeping these values of R one and R two, we get base current I B equal to I one upon ten. From equation this this. And this, we get Q point. Now stability factor. Let's separate the input section of the circuit from plus VCC, B, and G. So it is drawn like this. Now bend the upper end of this separated circuit like this. Till no any change we would make out of rules. Now this end is earthed, and this is also earthed. So we connect both these ends at a single point G. Now if we connect this molded circuit with the parent circuit, that is B with B and G with G, then there is no violation of any rule. But we will keep it separate and apply Thevenin's theorem for simplification. What is Thevenin theorem? Any two terminal network containing a number of EMF sources and resistances can be replaced by an equivalent series circuit having a voltage source VTH in series with a resistance RTH, where VTH is open circuited voltage between the two terminals, and RTH be the resistance between two terminals of the circuit. Obtained by looking in at the terminals with load removed and voltage source replaced by their internal resistance, if any. It means V T H equal to voltage measured between terminal B and C. For R T H with load removed, in our circuit no load, so skip this part. Next voltage source is replaced by their internal resistance. It means internal resistance of supply VCC. But we assume internal resistance of VCC is zero. So now RTH be the resistance measured between terminals B and G after disconnecting the supply VCC. That is RTH equal to R1 R2 upon R1 plus R2. Thus, according to Thevenin theorem, this circuit network is drawn like this. Now, if we connect this network between B and G like this, then this original circuit and with this Thevenized circuit, no any difference as per Thevenin's theorem. Now, apply Kirchhoff's law to this base emitter loop. We get V T H equal to I B R T H. Plus V B plus I E R E. Here I E equal to I B plus I C. Putting this value for this I E, 
we have VTH equal to IBRTH plus VBE plus IB plus IC into RE. Simplifying it, we get VTH equal to IBRTH plus VBE plus IBRE plus ICRE. Now take IB common from these terms. We have VTH equal to IB into RTH plus RE plus VBE plus ICRE. Making IB subject of the formula, we get IB equal to VTH minus VBE minus ICRE upon RTH plus RE. By differentiating with respect to IC, we get DIB upon DIC equal to minus RE upon RTH plus RE. Now, stability factor is defined as S equal to beta plus 1 upon 1 minus beta into DIB upon DIC. Substituting the value of DIB upon DIC from this equation, we get S equal to beta plus 1 upon 1 plus beta RE upon RTH plus RE. Now, transfer this part into numerator. Therefore, S equal to beta plus 1 into RTH plus RE upon RTH plus RE plus beta RE or S equal to beta plus 1 into RTH plus RE upon RTH plus into bracket beta plus 1 into RE. Dividing numerator and denominator by RE, therefore we get S equal to beta plus 1 into RTH upon RE plus 1 upon RTH upon RE plus beta plus 1. Here RTH is very very less than RE, therefore RTH upon RE equal to 0, therefore we get S equal to beta plus 1 into 1 upon beta plus 1 and that is 1. This is the smallest possible value of S and leads to the maximum possible thermal stability. Now, advantages and disadvantages. Advantages. This method provides better stabilization of the Q point against variation of temperature because here we obtain S equal to 1. So, stability factor is very low, therefore less chance of thermal runaway. It means self-destruction of the transistor is reduced. 3. Better biasing conditions provided by voltage drop across RE. And fourth one, no effect on stability if beta changed. It means we replace the transistor and change the beta then there are no any effect on the stability of Q point. So, these four are the advantages of this uh, biasing circuit. Now, disadvantages. One, complicated circuit as compared to other biasing circuit. Two, expensive. It is expensive because it needs more components. And three, Calculations are not easy. We found in the analysis of the circuit that it is required many calculations. So, it is the also disadvantages. So, there are three disadvantages of the circuit.